Okay, so for chapter 34, we are going to get into the phylum chordata. So this is the last phylum you have to know, and um, this is a big one. So um, people often think that chordates are going to be vertebrates, but that's not the truth. Um, there are going to be some that don't have a vertebral column, and we'll talk about those in a second. Now, in order to be in the phylum chordata, there are going to be four characteristics that an organism has to have. And so that'll come up here on our PowerPoint. So it's all these things that are kind of shaded. So the first one is going to be a dorsal hollow nerve cord. So in us, that would be like our spinal cord, or yeah, the actual you know nerves that are going through it. Um, and then you've got what's called a notochord. And a notochord is going to be a flexible rod that's going to either lie just below it or surround it. So in us, that's going to be our vertebral column that's protecting our spinal cord. And then you have a muscular postanal tail, and that's something that we had when we were a fetus that was developing and we don't have as an adult. And that's something I should bring up is the fact that you have to have these four characteristics at some point in your life. It could be all as an embryo and you don't have any as an adult, but at some point in your lifetime. Um, and then the last one is going to be pharyngeal slits, which are going to be um, slits in the pharynx area that we had as a developing fetus and then they closed up as we got older. So those are going to be the four things that anything in the phylum chordata has to have. Okay, so as I said before, there are going to be a couple of non-vertebrate chordates. And so um, there's two subphyla that are going to be in this category. And so you've got urochordata, um, which are going to be what are called tunicates. They're also called um, sea squirts. And these guys, it's kind of weird to think that they're one of our closest relatives that don't have a backbone, but it is true. Um, let's see if I can get down to it. Yeah, so this is what a sea squirt looks like. Not very attractive. Um, but these guys are going to be our closest relatives, one of our closest relatives that does not have a backbone. Um, kind of scary to think about. Now, they're not always that ugly. Um, here's a picture showing you how they can look kind of pretty. Um, and the reason they're called sea squirts is because when you pick them up, they actually contract and they squirt water out when they do that. It's a marine biologist. Um, Squirt gun is the way you can think of it. So this is a diagram of what they look like. And over here is going to be how they look as um, a larval phase. And if you look, they have all four characteristics as a larval phase, but as an adult, they only have those pharyngeal slits. And that's okay, as long as they have those four characteristics at some point in their life. Okay. So the way these guys work is they actually take water in through this top siphon. And then this thing that you see here is going to be what's called an endostyle. And that's going to be um, kind of this big like a sheet of mucus and what happens is um, particles in the water are going to get stuck on that and then the water is going to come back out this X current siphon and what they do is every couple hours they eat that mucus sheet that has the stuff trapped in it. Very nice, right? Okay, so that's going to be urochordata. Now the other subphylum that doesn't have a backbone is going to be what's called cephalochordata. And that's going to be these little guys that you see here that are called lancelets. Um, they're very small. You can see the scale, two centimeters, so they're probably five centimeters in length. And <clears throat> as an adult, they have all four of those characteristics. And so that's what puts them in the phylum chordata. Um, but subphylum cephalochordata, because they're obviously different from us, and they're also different from what we just looked at with those sea squirts. So the next phylum is going to be um, vertebrata. So let me pull that up on the notes and we can talk about that. So um, subphylum vertebrata is going to have a couple of characteristics about itself. Um, the first one is obviously going to be having a backbone or a vertebral column, hence vertebrata. Um, the other thing is a lot of vertebrates are going to have a very distinct and well-defined head. Um, another thing is the neural crest. So what the neural crest is, is as the embryo is developing, there's going to be like a little crest of cells that are going to give rise to all these other characteristics that we're talking about. So that's going to be distinct for them. Um, also having more internal organs developing. So you've got the liver, the kidneys, endocrine system, so a little bit more advanced. And then you've got an endoskeleton. Now the endoskeleton can be made of cartilage or bone. Um, if you think about sharks and stingrays, right, they're going to be made of cartilage, but most of the other things are going to be made of bone. Um, now, up to this point, a lot of the um, exoskeletons and things like that that we've been talking about have been made of chitin. And chitin is good, 
But if you think about it, um, it's very heavy and it's very brittle, which is why things that have an exoskeleton of chitin usually aren't very big, right? If you think about insects, you don't have huge insects flying around, and that's because they would be too heavy to be able to do so. Um, the other thing that you want to think about is if there are things that are big and have an exoskeleton made of chitin, they're usually in the water where the water can displace the weight. If we had a skeleton made of chitin, we would barely be able to move just because it would be so heavy, and we'd be breaking bones all the time because it's very very brittle. Okay, so in the next video we're going to get into the evolution of vertebrates and how they came to be.